Right, what's going on guys? Welcome to the video. So earlier today, Boris Johnson appeared on the LBC radio show with Nick Ferrari. The Tory leadership candidate took questions from viewers and from Nick himself about Brexit, the Ramonian neighbours' smear attempts against him over the weekend, and Steve Bannon connections. Now I've picked out some of the better bits in an otherwise boring interview. Let's check out the first clip, which is a question from a viewer. Peter, let's move to the next caller, and it's Chris in Glasgow. Chris, good morning. Good morning, Nick, and well done. Glad to get through the first audition. <laughs> uh, good morning, Mr Johnson. Good, good luck morning, with the selection process. Thank you, sir. Um, we, we've had call the commissioner and ring Reese Mogg. Is this to become press deputative PM? Well, I, I would love that, but I, you know, they, they, they I, I, Nick is very, very bashful chap. You know, I keep trying to, I keep trying to get on his show, but he's, <laughs> yes, you know, he, 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 I think, he, well, yeah, he's, he's reluctant to, to have only him. if we can do it in a wooded glade. Let's move to your yeah, question, sure. Chris. <laughs> okay, as a member of the Slovenian public, I'm not interested in some pond-like, sneaky, snooping, curtain-pitching, salacious claims about your deeply personal and very private chats. But I think listeners might be as keen as I am to hear how, as potential PM, you plan to contend with backbencher rebels in yes. your own party, such as Don Grieve, Oily Letwin and Toby Elwood, who are rumoured, perhaps even say, seem determined to bring down your government, or at least tie your negotiating hands as soon as you walk through the door of number 10. Well, Chris, I mean, that is the, the question that everybody raises with me, and it's entirely the right question, because people are looking at this thing and thinking, you know, Parliament is just not going to no. going to do this. But actually, I think they are. And they why? Will. What makes I'll you think I'll tell you that? why. I'll tell you why. Because what's happening now is that politics has totally changed, Nick, since March the 29th. We're staring down the barrel of defeat. And look at what happened in the European elections, in the council elections. My party, the Conservative Party, uh, is on 9% in the European elections. Every Tory MP understands that. And it's not as though Labour are doing that much better. They got the Liberal Democrats ahead of them. Uh, they're only on about 19%. Jeremy Corbyn, with superhuman incompetence, managed to go backwards in the recent council election. So, so the challenge for us all in Parliament is to get this thing done, get it over the line how, in a responsible Johnson, way. You say get it done, and I, I okay, saw you yesterday. Tell you. It seems to be down to a high, high level of enthusiasm, no. I get that, and threatening to walk away with £39 billion. Is that effectively the policy? Uh, no, the, but those two things are important. But, what's, but the, okay. what, what, you, what you need, in, in addition, of course, is you need to disaggregate the elements of the current withdrawal agreement, which is basically dead. You need to take the serviceable bits, and there's some good stuff stuff about EU citizens and the 3.2 million who are loved and valued and who contribute to the life of this country, they deserve to have their rights protected. We should pass that in UK law, get that done uh, immediately. Number two. So that's 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 day one of day Boris one, Johnson. Absolutely. Prime Minister opposition, all the European get, quite get rightly made well. Yeah, and okay. I, if you remember, just after the referendum, you can see the footage of this, in, or, I just, in, or read it in Hansard. I stood up behind the then Home Secretary, uh, Theresa, and said, come on, let's do this. This is the obvious thing to do. Uh, and, okay. and we didn't. And but it was that a will bring a complete, vault, a complete turnaround on the European Union side, will it? Well, what we will also do is, and there are some various other sensible things you could get done on a voluntary basis, but then you, what you need to do is look at the money, which is, which is at the high end of their expectations, 39 billion, and I think we need a bit of creative ambiguity about when and, and how much of that money is going to be paid and what kind of deal uh, it will be payable for. And the most important thing is to sort out the, the, the problem that so many MPs spotted in the withdrawal agreement and on all sides of the House. It wasn't just Eurosceptics in the Tory benches, it was Labour MPs. Everybody disliked vehemently the the proposals for the Northern Irish backstop. Yes, yeah, so what court. happens in Northern Ireland? So what we, well, the most number one, you do not have any kind of hard border. The United Kingdom will not impose checks in Northern Ireland, absolutely not. So how Absolutely will the not. monitoring take place? Uh, and th as you see, saw a brilliant report yesterday, uh, Greg Hans and Nicky Morgan and others, uh, more out uh, today. There are other techniques, uh, maximum facilitations you can use to check on for rules of origin, to counteract smuggling and contraband and you see the EU away buying this. from the frontier. I do. Because? I do. Because ultimately it's, uh, you prepare to walk away, right? Yes, and and that's of course the other leg of the of the of the of the of the proposal. 
it is vital as a country that we get ready to come out without an agreement if we must. But how will now, we trade? Well, in the same way that we uh, normally trade. And uh, that is to say that you can either... There, there are but two possibilities. But if we possibilities. walk away, doesn't... That GATT goes against the United Kingdom, doesn't no, it, if we no, walk away? No. Well, there, 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 there are two does, possibilities. Does it or doesn't it? There, it doesn't have to. Here's what you could do. So Mark I'm, Khan is wrong when he said if we walk away, GATT does not apply. Uh, well, he's, 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 he's right in the well, sense that GATT... Article 24, yes. paragraph 5b, makes it perfectly clear that two uh, countries that are in the process of beginning a free trade agreement may then, protract their existing, their existing arrangements what, what, what until, is the legal su basis until such time. Of walking away. Hang on, I'm just talking All about right, GATT 24. Okay. Uh, uh, may protract their existing arrangements until such time as they've completed the new free trade agreement and that's a very hopeful prospect let me just let's just go into that in some depth because that's a very that is basically that is the way forward what you need to mark to Carney happen, says it's not though mr no, johnson well what, where mark is right is is saying that that implies mutuality there has to be an agreement on both sides where, where is, i think there has been some confusion where is he wrong well, he's wrong in thinking that it's not an option. It's certainly an option. I don't, I don't, know, don't know whether he said it's not an option, but people are wrong if they say that it's not an option. I don't think Mark Carney has said that. What you can do... But the Attorney General also has concerns about the legality of this. No. no what, I think there's some confusion about it. What you can't do is unilaterally uh, come use a, a GATT24 solution. But w what you could do is agree with our EU friends and partners to go forwards together on that basis. And when you think about it, Nick, we haven't had an interruption uh, to trade between the UK and, and the continent for, for years and years and years. And I think it would be very bizarre if the uh, the EU uh, should decide on their own, you know, if we, we wouldn't put up tariffs, but if they decided to impose tariffs on goods mm -hmm. coming uh, from the from the UK, it'd be the first time. You know, it'd be a return to the Napoleon's continental system, right. uh, and it wouldn't be in the interests of their businesses, let alone their consumers. So right. let's be more positive about this. Okay, I think it's time. It's, ti it's time this country, frankly, stopped being so down about its ability to get this thing done. Okay. And what I offer at this election is the ability to change the equation, to change right. the way the approach, let's, the let's approach put some and not to continue right. uh, with the old failed approach. Okay. So the first question was, how does Boris intend to deal with the traitorous fuckpigs within the Conservative Party that plan to bring down his government in a no-confidence vote? And Boris answers with the same thing I've been saying for a while. If the Conservative Party fail to deliver Brexit, then they will be finished. The elections recently have shown that with the Brexit party running away with it in the EU elections and very nearly winning the Peterborough elections, although I think there was some possible electoral fraud going on there, but it will remain to be seen about that. The reason why the Conservative MPs will vote in party lines is because they will have to protect their cushy jobs as an MP and following the party line is going to be the only way to do that, even if they don't like it. He points out Commissar Corbynoff managed to go backwards in the recent council elections, which seems to be a theme for both major parties since Brexit. Take Theresa the EU appeaser when she called a snap election and lost seats to complete Muppet. Boris then moves on to the things he plans to do as PM regarding Brexit. He starts with the obvious statement that EU citizens already here would be protective, which of course we all knew any reports to the contrary were just project fear trying to sway public opinion. It was ridiculous. He then moves on to this 39 billion the EU expect us to pay, which is fucking insane. Why that was ever agreed is beyond me. Not sure why the British taxpayers should fund the EU for up to 10 years after we leave. Boris claims it's vital to be ready to leave on no deal. I would say this should have been the government's aim from the start. No deal has to be an option and should have been prepared for well in advance. Of course, Theresa May fucked it up, as she does with everything. Time, I, I just need to ask you, people seem to be excited. How much influence is Steve Bannon having on your yeah, this is the most. This is the biggest load of codswallop I have ever heard. Um, he I texts you regularly, he's no, giving you advice? No, absolutely not. I, I, complete codswallop. I met Mr Bannon in the White House when he was chief of staff to the president as you would expect in the course of my duties as foreign secretary he's texting he, they, you he's giving you advice for your he, speeches he he it is perfectly true that when the president came to 
this country last year, was it last year or the year before? Anyway, it was last year. Yes, uh, and again this year. He, uh, Steve Bannon texted me on a couple of occasions trying to fix a meeting. Uh, I texted back to say that, that meeting was not possible. Why? And that is, well, I can't remember. I just, I was, I was doing In a glade things. again. I'm afraid I was otherwise occupied. But that is the sum total. And, th and yet this is turned by uh, people who wish to uh, stop me from achieving what I want to achieve into some crazy kind of outright conspiracy involving me and Steve Bannon. Anybody who looks at my record, this is incredibly important, knows that I'm a progressive, modern conservative. I believe passionately in improving the lot of everybody in society. I do not belong to, uh, I, I, and I, I ran London, as you will remember, Nick, I ran London from the, from the okay. big centre of politics, and we did some fantastic things for our city, and I want to do those things for our country. Thank you well. for your time, Boris Johnson appearing. So we hear Boris Johnson address the Steve Bannon connections that are obviously fake news. I covered David Lammy using Steve Bannon as a way to smear Boris Johnson in a Twitter spat where the Labour MP said it was OK to throw whatever you have to hand at right-wing political figures. He termed Boris and Steve Bannon white supremacists, but that's what fuck pigs like him do in the demented world of the Twitter echo chambers. Of course, the left-wing media completely ignored that David Lammy had said any of this because of the recent Joe Brand acid joke fiasco that showed the BBC's clear left-wing bias. Now, as Boris says, it's a complete load of codswallop, going on to state that his contact with him has been brief, and calling out the political agenda behind the smear campaign, which we all know is to stop him becoming Prime Minister, and by extension stopping Brexit, especially a no-deal Brexit. It seems the Ramonas will do all they can to ignore democracy and further their Marxist ideology. Your neighbours, curtain-twitching Corbynistas. Look, I, that is a, matter, a question you might reasonably direct uh, elsewhere. Why? They're your neighbours. I, I, Still want to I, stay? I don't want to, I don't want to get into uh, I've casual... I've very genuinely afford, casual, very generously casual. afforded more time, so no, I can no, hang sorry, around. No, so were they curtain-twitching Corbynistas? I don't want to get into... Would you casual ever... Casual name-calling and... Would you ever record been, a fracas already, in a neighbour's there, there house? Already, there already has been casual name-calling in this... No, would you uh, ever record a fracas at a neighbour's house? I cannot imagine the circumstances in which I would do so, frankly. What do you think of those who well, do? You know, I, I, it, as I said, I think there's been a lot of name-calling. Do you need to leave yet? Great. <laughs> Nick then asked, asked about the neighbours who reported him to the police and recorded his argument, called it, asking, are they curtain-twitching Corbynistas? Which we all know they are, but given how the media would spin anything Boris said, he did the right thing refusing to label them with names. Well, I won't refuse to label them. In my opinion, they're not curtain-twitching Corbynistas. They are the commie-sucking spunk trumpets of the Marxist shitweasel Commissar Corbynov. So I'm going to end the video there. I'm glad Boris has rubbished the Steve Bannon smear attempt as no doubt more will come shortly, like the uh, neighbours smearing him with the argument when there's a good chance it might have been his girlfriend who was getting a bit feisty and that's why Boris won't talk about it. Let me know your thoughts down in the comments section below though. Don't forget to like and share the video as it helps the channel a lot and I will see you all in the next one.